Hey, this is Aaron from Implant Software. Today I'm going to give you a quick demo of distributed version control workflows. I will use Git, the widely popular distributed version control system, and CodeBeamer, the platform that provides collaboration functionality on top of Git. It's important to note that everything demonstrated here is DVCS agnostic. It means that you can apply the same principles also with other DVCS implementations like Mercurial and Bazaar, for instance. Finally, a disclaimer, I'm working for another company which builds CodeBeamer. So why would you care? Why another workflow? Where there are countless advantages of using a distributed approach instead of the good old centralized one in version control. This table gives you a quick summary. As you see, using DVCS you benefit from a speedy, non-blocking, error-tolerant process that promotes staging, code reviews, and ensures low risk and high scalability. On the downside, you pay with slightly increased complexity. No free lunch, but DVCS is well worth the extra efforts. Alright, uh, that's about the theory, and now let's get started and see the actors. First off, we have the so called BLAS repository, which contains the reference code of our imaginary software product. The BLAS repo is a new notion introduced by DVCS, as in the old centralized world there was only one repo that every team member could read and write, causing lots of headaches. So for our, for our imaginary company, it's absolutely critical that the BLAST repository always contains well-tested code that's been reviewed by senior developers. In this demo, Ingrid represents the integrator, the senior team member, integrating changes contributed by other developers. She has redirect right access to the BLAST repo. And then we have Dennis, the junior developer. Dennis is a cool guy, but he joined the team just a month ago, so every piece of code he writes must be reviewed. So he doesn't get right access to the reference code. Okay, but how can Dennis contribute then? Well, he can make a live copy of the BLAD repo to have his own sandbox. We call this operation forking in DVCS. He commits his changes to his home fork, and every time he wants his changes to be transferred to the BLAD repo, he asks Ingrid, hey, can you please merge my changes? Again, Ingrid can read Dennis's fork as she is a senior developer. So it's that simple. Dennis requests Ingrid to pull his changes from the fork to the blad repo. They call it a pull request. Then Ingrid reviews the changes and may or may not accept the pull request. Alright, um, let's see this in action now. Initially, Dennis is logged into the collaboration platform. No right access to the BLAD repo, so he forks it and starts working on the next version of the connection pooling algorithm, for instance. Right now he has his fork, so he clones it from the server to his local working environment using the git command line client. He copies and pastes the clone URL from the browser uh, to the command line. Then, as the first logical step, he increases the version number of the MAMMOT project. He commits the change. Then he notices that there is an unnecessary annotation in the code and decides to clean it. Commit it and then push both changes back to the server. The collaboration platform picks up the changes immediately and shows everything in the web interface. Now Dennis is ready to request Ingrid to pull these two changes to the BLAS repo. He chooses the source and target branches, he describes the changes, what actually have been changed, why should this be merged, blah blah blah. The system displays the aggregated and colored diff of all these changes, so it's very easy to see everything in one place. So the pull request has been sent. Ingrid receives a notification email from the collaboration system and logs in to see what's going on. So there's a pull request from Dennis. I can see that it can be merged without conflicts, but let's see what actually he did and review it. Okay, generally looks okay, but uh, I want him to release an explicit beta version before the next final. 
So I will reject the change and add to, hit, to mark it as the B dot. So now Dennis is pinged by the system. Hey, your pull request has been rejected. Logs in and see the comment from Ingrid. Aha, uh -huh, that's easy to fix. Alright, done. Now pushing it. So Dennis is sending the pull request again. Hoping that this time it will pass in this careful code review. Quickly checking the build before sending it. Okay. Send. Ingrid comes back and... Ah, okay, yeah. I can safely merge it now. She just clicks merge and then the collaboration system does all the heavy lifting in the background, merging the three changes from the Nisys 4 to the Blast repo. Okay, quick check. Are the three changes now visible in the Blast? Yeah, we're done. So quick summary again. According to the integrator workflow, developers work in their own forks and request integrator to pull their changes to the Blast repo. Simple but very effective. Alright, thanks for watching. Please visit www.influent.com and learn more about feature branches, code reviews, submodules, and other more advanced topics related to DVCS. Also, learn more about managing agile projects and products with the help of DVCS. Thanks.